Well, do you have some bad habits? I think each and every one of us might say, over the course of life, we've developed some pretty bad habits, things that we would like to change, things that we're dealing with. There was a mother who complained to her doctor about her daughter's strange eating habits. Doc, she said, I can't believe this. All my daughter wants to do is sit around and eat yeast and car wax. What do you think will happen to her? This is a crazy habit. What's going to happen to my daughter? He says, well, I tell you the only thing. Eventually, she's going to rise and shine. <laughs> all right, just trying to wake you all up after you've lost that hour of sleep. You're ready to go back to bed, right? Okay. She's ready to rise and shine, and how about you? Okay. So what's our bad habit that we may have within our life? And let me tell you, there is one bad habit that so many of us embrace in, and that's that we deny our spiritual divinity within us. We don't awaken to this. We don't recognize it. We keep putting it aside. We don't call it forth. We don't acknowledge it. We're not every day living in the understanding of the truth that there is a divinity within us, God within each and every one of us, God within all. For we are created in that image and likeness of the divine, and we cannot emphasize that enough. We cannot emphasize the importance of understanding that you, as you are created as the divine being right here in this world, but yet we find a world that's so confused about that and often feeling that it's a great thing to embrace such a sense of humility and humbleness that says, you know, I am not divine, I'm not good, I'm not God. I need to embrace my humility and say I'm completely unworthy. I hear this quite often, people embracing this consciousness or thinking around being unworthy, and that is simply this bad habit where we're denying the divinity within us. And we're not the only ones, because as we look through ancient times and the reading of the text in the scriptures, we find that the religious leaders of the day of Jesus were also struggling with this. Wait a minute, we don't quite understand. We're human beings, and you're talking to us about divinity within us, God within us. We worship a God that is outside of us, and their struggle was to try to put this together. How can we be divine and be human? It doesn't make sense. For Jesus began to constantly proclaim as he said, I and the Father are one. I and the divine source are one. How can you be one? You're talking about your father, your father, Joseph. I just saw him on the street corner. You and Joseph are one. The Pharisees and religious leaders of the day were struggling to say, what is he talking about? This is so confusing. How can you and your father be one? We don't quite get this. Then, of course, Jesus went on to confuse them more. Say, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Wait a minute. I know you may think that you look like your dad, but I've seen you, but I don't. Again, what they were doing is getting caught up in the literalism of what Jesus was speaking. Quite often what we don't quite understand is that Jesus spoke, well, I'm going to call it spiritual talk, using a spiritual talk, talking about things and using idioms, mes uh, metaphors, using symbols to convey something deeper, but so often it goes by us. So many of us will read the Bible, we'll read scriptures, and we read passages. We take them literally. We think they're black and white to be explained to us. And then we struggle with all the depth of the text and saying, wait a minute, this just seems so contradictory. So it was that the religious leaders of Jesus' day were struggling with Jesus' teaching because it didn't make sense to them. They lived in this world of black and white. Let me tell you this. That example, though, speaks volumes to me. It helps me personally because I understand quite often I've struggled with scriptures. I've struggled with the texts. And then I realize that the reason this struggle is there for us is to call us out to be seekers, to seek, to really sought after. That's what it is to seek, not just to take things lightly, because quite often you may take something that's handed to you or given to you with a great nugget of wisdom and go, Oh, that's lovely. That's nice. Never seeking the deeper meaning of it. How many of you are participating with your affirmation jars in the 50 days of affirmations? And you're taking out those affirmations and you maybe unfold that little piece of paper and go, oh, nice little thought. You know, uh, all things are possible with God. All things. Yes, all things. Okay, that sounds nice. And you then throw it in the trash. The problem is 
We don't, if we don't take time to contemplate, to look at the deeper meaning and the application for us life. What does it mean when we take this out? It says, all things, everything is working for my good. All things are possible. No matter what you are confronted with, it's all possible. And so looking to the deeper meaning would be to say that there is nothing there for us to fear, nothing for us to be afraid of. We could just relax and be at perfect peace because with God, in God, through God, all things are possible. When we contemplate, when we look for the deeper meaning, when we search out, when we seek, when we go deeper and deeper in, we find truth unfolding for our lives. That there's something there for us is the deeper context. Go for it. Get it. Seek it. Search it. That's what we're called to do constantly. So We find Jesus beginning to teach and talk about his oneness, talking about the divinity within him. That when you see me, you see God, you see the Father, you see the source of all good. You see it within me when I am ministering, when I'm talking, when I'm teaching. Being that great example for us, then he sets this for us too, to understand our divinity within each and every one of us. But we look at so much of life through this right brain, left brain struggle that we have in our world. That right brain being that area where we may be open to more symbolic or metaphorical thinking, and that left brain that's more just literal thinking. Uh, Those of us who are left-handed are in our right mind. Uh, Yes, uh uh-huh. We're in that right brain thinking. And, uh, well, the others, we just pray for you. Uh, Just kidding. What we have is this sort of sense that we're caught up in this literalisms where we look at everything so black and white, and that's why we struggle with things in life. What if we looked at everyday experiences as being speaking to us metaphorically? Everything that we encounter speaking to us with a deeper meaning. The rain falling down in this past week. What is it saying to us? What's the spiritual meaning of something deeper that God clears for this wonderful universe and that there's loving, nurturing care going on? And that message alone is enough for us to contemplate, to realize that the universe is taking care of each and every one of us. And so it is that we're in this divine care. Wow, think about all the things that we might think about in life and not take them just so literally. Look about the metaphor, the symbol, the message, the deeper meaning of everything you're going on and going through. And you're going to discover how God has been speaking to you in unique and unusual ways. We get caught up in this literalism, though, and that's our struggle. We so struggle with it even in our own English language. How many of you gather around with friends and shoot the breeze? What shoot the breeze? Doesn't that sound crazy? Shoot the breeze? Are we up there shooting? You know, what's going on when you say shoot the breeze? You see, here's another example. Sometimes we take things so literally, we realize that's just a wonderful phrase that invites us to say that we could gather together with friends and that we're just going to engage in some idle chatter, just carrying on conversation. Ah, oh, you're just shooting the breeze, so we say. Do you know where that actually came from? It came from in the old Western days that people would actually, when they were bored, shoot the guns up in the air because they had nothing else to do, and they would just shoot the breeze because it was like, eh, I'm bored. What else is there going on? You know, hey, get the guns out. So it is that we say, wow, you see how something that was an action that we then suddenly started to take as a phrase that we embodied in our life. And then we realized, wait a minute, not everything was meant to be taken literally. When I first arrived here, coming from Africa, after living there in years of my life and then embracing American culture, someone said to me as a young man, would you run to the store and grab a sandwich and step on it? I'm like, why do you want me to step on your sandwich? I couldn't couldn't understand it, but okay, Americans do some crazy things. So... Damn, I'll step on that hamburger. There we go. If you want me to step on it, step on it. Here's your smash burger, your smash sandwich, you know. Uh, that was that was what? That was the birth of the panini, right? Uh, exactly. Uh, yes, little shoe tread marks on there, yeah. What we find then is this craziness that we've embraced in our life, that we get caught up in everything being so literal. And here it is where we find that we have to realize that We need to move on from that literalism to find the deeper meaning of day-to-day living and certainly the deeper meaning of Scripture text for our lives. 
And I hear these people saying, you know, deny yourself, and then we are able to claim something, that you need to deny everything, and that you say that you are worthless, you are of no value. And we see this in spiritual communities constantly, everybody trying to say, I am nothing, God is everything. True, but that God that is everything is within you. And to believe ourselves to be absolutely nothing in order to see ourselves as something or as everything would be simply to claim a lie that would say, wait a minute, when you say you are nothing, wait a minute, did we not say you are created in the image and likeness of God? How then can you say you're nothing? How then can you say that you are unworthy? How can you say that you have no value? How can you say, oh, I need to be in this humbled state that I might then suddenly find that I am something? But to acknowledge or to say that you are nothing in hopes of getting to be something is simply living out a lie. Because you always are and always were and always will be something amazing. I want to tell you this, that Jesus didn't become the son of God by realizing he was nothing. Jesus became the son of God by realizing he was everything. And that's where we need to be in our life, realizing that we are everything. The divine is at work within us, equipping us, filling us, flowing through us. For Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. It's within you. The divinity of God rests within you. The very presence of God rests within you. And so we invite people to go within, to go into that centered space in consciousness and thought, to go into that sacred place and discover and uh, the wonderful fresh awareness of this loving God that we encounter all the time. For everything is realizing we are one with God. When we come to this point to say, I realize I am everything. Everything I need is already within me. That's so true. All the patience you need, all the grace you need, all the love you need, all of the wonderful forgiveness that you need to share, it's found within you. And here it again, it's the day-to-day -day release of these things from within, coming from within, going out within our lives. And it begins with us acknowledging, I then am everything. Not I'm nothing. I am everything. Let's say it together. I am everything. That's that everything that God has within is there for you to work in you and through you and for you. You are consciousness. This is the true self. You are not the body, but you are also need to be physically aware of the body. Here's this double thread that we need to weave within our understanding. Yes, I am in this physical world. Yes, I am a physical body. Yes, I am the temple of the Lord. And that temple being the dwelling place of the divine, that we are consciousness, awareness within the body. That's what you are. We hope you're all conscious this morning. Everyone not conscious? I know you didn't have a lot of sleep, but oh, you're, some of you are struggling with that. Okay. We hope that we acknowledge not only we're mentally conscious, but that we're also, this consciousness is our spirituality, our awareness within us. You're a physical being and you're a spiritual being. And that double thread that we want to merge together within our understanding that shapes in us a clarity as who we are, that says, yes, in our physical being, there is limitation, but in our spiritual being, there is unlimited po po possibilities for us. So this makes a beautiful difference for us that we need to blend together because we sometimes forget we always are walking on our human side and saying, I'm nothing, I'm not able, I'm not capable. And we have the bad habit of denying the divinity within us. We want to merge these two into a double thread of understanding to be seen in two ways. I sometimes struggle as we've attended AA meetings with congregants and friends to help be supportive and to be someone there who, as a pastor, might be involved in uh, their programs of acknowledgement of their particular journey in AA. I find people standing up and saying things like, hi, my name is Paul, and I am an alcoholic. But I really struggle with that because the I am is the recognition then of this God within you, right? The God within you is the I am. And that what you profess that you are is when you're saying I am, you're saying I am that. I am. This is what God is in me. So we understand that? Well, I struggle with that consciousness of that th way of thinking to say I am. Uh, an alcoholic, because God the I am is not an alcoholic. 
God is not struggling with addiction. God is not struggling with these kind of issues. But how about we were to say, hi, my name is Paul, and Paul is an alcoholic. The I am within me is living out infinite possibilities. You see, here's this recognition then that we bring together in a double thread. We begin to acknowledge, I am human, and here's Paul, but here is also the divinity within Paul the presence of God within me, working through me and around me. That presence is not an alcoholic. Paul, in his physical limitation, may struggle with these things. But the God within, the I am, is not an alcoholic. So here we might find that we can really understand this wonderful truth that I can do all things through this Christ consciousness, this God aware within me. I can because I acknowledge in this double thread, I am human and divine. And I am not going to deny my divinity, but celebrate it. Celebrate the presence of God working in and through me. Celebrate the power of God working in and through me. Celebrate it each and every day and know that as I wake up in the morning, it's God working through me. It is God revealing through me. It's this wonderful power that we are living out each and every day that makes a difference. Now, we constantly talk about people who will use this catchphrase so freely, Jesus, take the wheel. And probably with that is that as people say, Jesus, take the wheel, what happens is we're really almost saying that we're not aware of our divinity within us. Because that phrase itself is saying something outside of me, do it for me. And right then is the bad habit of denying our divinity. That there's God within So we want to realize our divinity, and the divinity would say, I'm within you, this power and presence. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, say. So we wouldn't say, Jesus, take the wheel, but just, Jesus, you're working through me as I take the wheel. God is working through me because there is a divinity that I will not deny that's within me. I will exercise it. I will celebrate it. I am not looking to something outside me to manifest. I am manifesting from within outward. And watch out, I'm taking the wheel for the power and presence of God within me is working through me. I don't need to say, someone else do it for me because I can't. I'm just too human. Well, when we've done that, we've denied our divinity in our lives. So today I'm inviting you to take a leap. Um, Take a leap in metaphysical understanding. What is metaphysical? But that which is beyond the physical. Aren't we going to church to be spiritual beings? Wouldn't we want to be spiritual? Wouldn't we want to move beyond the physical into the spiritual? That just makes common sense that we would want to understand a metaphysical journey. That meaning that we're moving, taking a leap into this metaphysical understanding of our lives. When we understand this wonderful inner inner being within us, this is divine presence within us. Uh, Take this leap into seeing our divinity and acknowledging our humanness yet opening our eyes to the greater within us. This is what happens when we are at this place. Yes, I am physical Paul. This is a body. But yes, I am the divinity of God revealed as Paul. Yes, I'm the temple of the Lord, the dwelling place of this divine presence. Yes, I'm a temple, but the Lord is what dwells in this temple. And I acknowledge this consciousness, this awareness within me. I celebrate it. And I want to make a new habit, a new habit of every day acknowledging my divinity, acknowledging God within me. Jesus taught it so clearly for us to embrace. Yet so often in our world, in our culture, in traditional Christianity, we overlook this in a sense of desire to say, I just need to be humble. I need to be in humility. I I am nothing. I am worthless. I am a wretch. I'm a worm. I'm all these as low as it can be uh, consciousness. But today we're developing a new habit, taking a leap. And we're leaping into this wonderful habit of acknowledging our divinity every day. And what will happen in our life as we do this, we're going to see the, uh, what happens is that the invisible becomes more visible or real to us. The invisible becomes more visible or real to us. So we're talking about in the spiritual realm when we take this leap, God at work within me, I now see the world totally differently. And I take this leap to see the invisible become visible 
for me, more real. The visible meaning God is making a way when there seems to be no way. That is now visible for me. That which we thought was invisible is now being revealed to us in greater ways than ever before. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 17 offers this beautiful story of going into battle. And Elisha is there with a young apprentice within him. And he is afraid in this battle, in this struggle. And he offers this passage or this phrase, Do not be afraid, Elisha said, for those who are with us are more than those who are against them. Now this young man said, wait a minute, you're telling me I see a big army around us and I'm scared to death. We're going to be destroyed. And Elisha says, no, 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 wait, just relax. Those that are with us are greater, are more than those that are with them. What? Who's with us? He's looking around. I don't see a big old army with us. It's just a few of us. Ah. Elisha then prayed, O oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Please open his eye that he may see the divinity, God at work, that he may see God at work in him, through him, and around him at all times. And this is our prayer. As the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, he saw the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha and suddenly revealed that the power of God is at work in mighty ways. Here's the change. When we stop this horrible habit and give up this bad habit of denying our divinity, we see the miraculous around us in new ways. It's spoken to us metaphorically, symbolically, in the very day-to-day experiences that we're living. And we're seeing that God who is in you is greater than that which is outside of you greater than the uh, enemies that you may see around you, greater than the thoughts that come against you that want to oppress you or make you uh, stress you or make you live in fear and doubt. God is greater than all those, and your eyes open up to see the infinite possibilities that are there for our lives. It requires taking a leap. It requires taking a leap into every day acknowledging God within me. I am the revelation of God. I am divine. I am human. But I am the revelation of this wonderful power and presence at work within me, through me, and around me. So today, it's all about releasing bad habits. It's letting go of bad habits, not just chewing uh, gum in public or not just uh, coughing without covering your mouth. Or it's not physical bad habits in that. But today's big bad habit is... I am releasing, denying my divinity, and I welcome and celebrate it now. Amen.